History of Hungary, Wikipedia Audio Hungary is a country in Central Europe whose history under this name dates to the early Middle Ages, when the Pannonian Basin was conquered by the Hungarians, a semi-nomadic people who had migrated from Eastern Europe. For the history of the area before this period, see Pannonian Basin before Hungary. The oldest archaeological site in Hungary is Virtus Slos, where Paleolithic Old Owen pebble tools and an early human fossil nicknamed Samu were discovered in 1965. The Roman Empire conquered territory west of the Danube River between 35 and 9 BC. From 9 BC to the end of the 4th century AD, Pannonia, the western part of the Carpathian Basin, was part of the Roman Empire. In the final stages of the expansion of the Roman Empire in the early centuries of the first millennium AD, the Carpathian Basin fell under the Mediterranean influence of Greco-Roman civilization for a short period town centers, paved roads, and written sources were all part of the advances put to an end by the migration of peoples that characterized the early Middle Ages in Europe. Early History After the Western Roman Empire collapsed in the 5th century AD under the stress of the migration of Germanic tribes and Carpian pressure, the migration period continued to bring many invaders into Central Europe. Among the first to arrive were the Huns, who built up a powerful empire under Attila the Hun in 435 AD. Attila was regarded in past centuries as an ancestral ruler of the Hungarians, but this is now considered to be inaccurate. It is believed that the origin of the name Hungary does not come from the Central Asian Hun nomadic invaders, but rather from Magyar tribes that were part of a Bulgar alliance called Anogar, which in Bulgar Turkic meant ten arrows. They entered what is now Hungary in the 7th century AD. After Hunnish rule faded in the 6th century AD, the Germanic Ostrogoths, Lombards, and Slavs came to Pannonia, whereas the Jepids had a presence in the eastern part of the Carpathian Basin for about 100 years. In the 560s the Avars founded the Avar Khaganate, a state that maintained supremacy in the region for more than two centuries and had the military power to launch attacks against its neighboring empires. The Avar Khaganate was weakened by constant wars and outside pressure, and the Franks under Charlemagne managed to defeat the Avars to end their 250-year rule. In the middle of the 9th century, the Slavic Balaton Principality, also known as Lower Pannonia, was established by the Franks as a frontier march when they destroyed the Avar state in the western part of the Pannonian plain, however this vassal state was destroyed in 900 by Hungarian tribes. List of Heads of State of Hungary, List of Hungarian Monarchs, List of Prime Ministers of Hungary Arpad was the leader who unified the Magyar tribes via the Covenant of Blood, forging what was thereafter known as the Hungarian nation. He led the new nation to the Carpathian Basin in the 9th century. Between 895 and 902 the whole area of the Carpathian Basin was conquered by the Hungarians. An early Hungarian state was formed in this territory in 895. The military power of the nation allowed the Hungarians to conduct successful fierce campaigns and raids as far as the territories of modern Spain. A defeat at the Battle of Lechfeld in 955 signaled an end to raids on western territories, although they continued into lands controlled by the Byzantine Empire until 970, and links between the tribes weakened. Prince Giza of the Arpad dynasty, who ruled only part of the United Territory, was the nominal overlord of all seven Magyar tribes. He aimed to integrate Hungary into Christian Western Europe by rebuilding the state according to the Western political and social models. 
Gaza established a dynasty by naming his son Vajk as his successor. This decision was contrary to the dominant tradition of the time to have the eldest surviving member of the ruling family succeed the incumbent. By ancestral right, Prince Kopani, the oldest member of the dynasty, should have claimed the throne, but Gaza chose his first-born son to be his successor instead. Kopani did not relinquish his ancestral rights without a fight. After Giza's death in 997, Kopani took up arms, and many subjects in Transdanubia joined him. The rebels claimed to represent the old political order, ancient human rights, tribal independence, and pagan belief. They did not prevail. Stephen won a decisive victory over his uncle Kopani and had him executed. Hungary was recognized as a Catholic apostolic kingdom under St. Stephen I. Stephen was the son of Giza and thus a descendant of Arpad. Stephen was crowned with the Holy Crown of Hungary in the first day of 1000 AD in the capital city of Estragom. Pope Sylvester II conferred on him the right to have the cross carried before him, with full administrative authority over bishoprics and churches. By 1006, Stephen had solidified his power by eliminating all rivals who either wanted to follow the old pagan traditions or wanted an alliance with the Eastern Christian Byzantine Empire. Then he initiated sweeping reforms to convert Hungary into a Western feudal state, complete with forced Christianization. Stephen established a network of ten episcopal and two archiepiscopal sees and ordered the build-up of monasteries, churches and cathedrals. In the earliest times, Hungarian language was written in a runic-like script. The country switched to the Latin alphabet under Stephen, and Latin was the official language of the country between 1000 and 1844. Stephen followed the Frankish administrative model. The whole of this land was divided into counties, each under a royal official called an Ispan, later Fispn. This official represented the king's authority, administered his subjects, and collected the taxes that formed the national revenue. Each Ispan maintained an armed force of freemen at his fortified headquarters. History of Europe after the death of Croatian King Zivanimir, King Ladislaus I decided to intervene in the conflicts emerging among competing factions of Croatian noblemen. He informed Abbot Adarazias of Monte Cassino of the conquest of Sclavonia in a letter of 1091. However kingship over all of Croatia would not be achieved until the reign of his successor Coloman. With the coronation of King Koloman as King of Croatia and Dalmatia in Biograd in 1102, the kingdoms of Hungary and Croatia were united under one crown. The nature of the relationship varied through time, Croatia retained a large degree of internal autonomy overall, while the real power rested in the hands of the local nobility. Modern Croatian and Hungarian historiographies mostly view the relations between the Kingdom of Croatia and Kingdom of Hungary from 1102 as a form of a personal union presided over by a common king. After the Great Schism between Western Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Christianity was formalized in 1054, Hungary viewed itself as the easternmost bastion of Western civilization a judgment affirmed in the 15th century by Pope Pius II, who expressed himself to Holy Roman Emperor Frederick III in these terms, Hungary is the shield of Christianity and the protector of Western civilization. Middle Ages The Arpad dynasty produced monarchs throughout the 12th and 13th centuries. King Bela III was the wealthiest and most powerful member of the dynasty, with an annual equivalent of 23,000 kilograms of pure silver at his disposal. 
This exceeded the resources of the French king and was double the amount available to the English crown. In 1195, Bela expanded the Hungarian kingdom southward and westward to Bosnia and Dalmatia and extended suzerainty over Serbia, a process that helped to break up the Byzantine Empire and diminish its influence in the Balkan region. The early 13th century in Hungary was distinguished by the reign of King Andrew II, who acceded to the throne in 1205 and died in 1235. In 1211, he granted the Burzen land to the Teutonic Knights, but in 1225 expelled them from Transylvania, hence the Teutonic Order had to transfer to the Baltic Sea. Andrew set up the largest royal army in the history of Crusades when he led the Fifth Crusade to the Holy Land in 1217. In 1224, he issued the Diploma Andrinum, which unified and ensured the special privileges of the Transylvanian Saxons. It is considered the first autonomy law in the world. The Golden Bull of 1222 was the first constitution in continental Europe. The Hungarian equivalent of England's Magna Carta to which every Hungarian king thereafter had to swear the Golden Bull had a twofold purpose that limited royal power. On the one hand, it reaffirmed the rights of the smaller nobles of the old and new classes of royal servants against both the crown and the magnates. On the other hand, it defended the rights of the whole nation against the crown by restricting the powers of the latter in certain fields and making refusal to obey its unlawful-slash-unconstitutional commands legal. The lesser nobles also began to present Andrew with grievances, a practice that evolved into the institution of the parliament, or diet. Hungary became the first country in which a parliament had supremacy over the kingship. The most important legal ideology was the doctrine of the Holy Crown. The most important principle of the doctrine was the belief that sovereignty belonged to the noble nation. The members of the Holy Crown were the citizens of the Crown's lands, and no citizen could attain absolute power over the others. The nation would share only some political power with the ruler. In 1241-1242, the Kingdom of Hungary suffered a major blow in the wake of the Mongol invasion of Europe. After Hungary was invaded by the Mongols in 1241, the Hungarian army was defeated disastrously at the Battle of Moi. King Bela IV first fled the battlefield and then the country after the Mongols pursued him to its borders. Before the Mongols retreated, a large part of the population died, indeed, historians estimate the losses between 20 and 50 percent. In the plains, between 50 and 80 percent of the settlements were destroyed. Only castles, strongly fortified cities and abbeys could withstand the assault as the Mongols had no time for long sieges their goal was to move west as soon as possible. The siege engines and the Chinese and Persian engineers that operated them for the Mongols had been left in Russia. The devastation caused by the Mongol invasions later led to the invitation of settlers from other parts of Europe, especially from Germany. During the Mongols' Russian campaign, some 40,000 Cumans, members of a nomadic tribe of pagan Kipchaks, were driven west of the Carpathian Mountains. There, the Cumans appealed to King Bela IV of Hungary for protection. The Iranian Jassic people came to Hungary together with the Cumans after they were defeated by the Mongols. Cumans constituted perhaps up to 7-8% of the population of Hungary in the second half of the 13th century. Over the centuries they were fully assimilated into the Hungarian population, and their language disappeared, but
but they preserved their identity and their regional autonomy until 1876. As a consequence of the Mongol invasions, King Bela ordered the construction of hundreds of stone castles and fortifications to help defend against a possible second Mongol invasion. The Mongols did indeed return to Hungary in 1286, but the newly built stone castle systems and new military tactics involving a higher proportion of heavily armed knights stopped them. The invading Mongol force was defeated near Pest by the royal army of King Ladislaus IV. Later invasions were also repelled handily. The castles built by Bela IV proved to be very useful at a later time in the long struggle against the Ottoman Empire. However, the cost of building them indebted the Hungarian king to the major feudal landlords, so that the royal power reclaimed by Bela IV after his father Andrew II significantly weakened it was once again dispersed among the lesser nobility. The Patrimonial Kingdom Mongol Attacks After a destructive period of interregnum, the first Angevin king of Hungary, Charles I successfully restored royal power and defeated oligarchic rivals known as the Little Kings. A descendant of the Arpad dynasty in the female line, he reigned between 1308 and 1342. His new fiscal, customs, and monetary policies proved successful. Age of Elected Kings Age of Early Absolutism Decline Early Modern Age Ethnic Impact of the Ottoman Wars One of the primary sources of the new king's power was the wealth derived from the gold mines of eastern and northern Hungary. Production eventually reached the remarkable figure of 3,000 pounds of gold annually one-third of the total production of the world as then known, and five times as much as that of any other European state. Charles also sealed an alliance with the Polish king Cosimir the Great. After Italy, Hungary was the first European country in which the Renaissance appeared. One sign of its progressiveness was the establishment of a printing press in Buda in 1472 by Andras Hess, one of the earliest outside of the German lands. The second Hungarian king of the Angevin line, Louis the Great extended his rule as far as the Adriatic Sea and occupied the Kingdom of Naples several times. In 1351, the Golden Bull of 1222 was completed with a law of entail. This stipulated that the nobles' hereditary lands could not be taken away and must remain in the possession of their families. He also became King of Poland. The epic hero of Hungarian literature and warfare, the king's champion Miklos Toldi, lived during his reign. Louis had become popular in Poland because of his campaign against the Tatars and pagan Lithuanians. In two successful wars against Venice, he was able to annex Dalmatia, Ragusa, and further territories on the Adriatic Sea. Venice was also required to raise the Angevin flag in St. Mark's Square on Holy Days. He retained his strong influence in the political life of the Italian peninsula for the rest of his life. Some Balkan states became his vassals while the Ottoman Turks confronted them ever more often. In 1366 and 1377, Louis led successful campaigns against the Ottomans. From the time of the death of Cosimir the Great in 1370, he was also King of Poland. In cultural affairs, he is notable for establishing a university in Pex in 1367. Later Modern Period King Louis died without a male heir and after years of anarchy, the future Holy Roman Emperor Sigismund, a prince of the Luxembourg line, 
succeeded to the throne by marrying the daughter of Louis the Great, Mary of Hungary. It was not for entirely selfless reasons that one of the leagues of barons helped him to power, Sigismund had to pay for the support of the lords by transferring a sizable part of the royal properties. For some years, the barons' council governed the country in the name of the Holy Crown, the king was even imprisoned for a short time. The restoration of the authority of the central administration took decades. In 1404, Sigismund introduced the Placidum Regnum. According to this decree, papal bulls and messages could not be pronounced in Hungary without the consent of the king. Sigismund summoned the Council of Constance that met between 1414 and 1418 to abolish the Avignon Papacy and end the Western Schism of the Catholic Church, which was resolved by the election of Pope Martin V. During his long reign, the royal castle of Buda became probably the largest Gothic palace of the late Middle Ages. After the death of Sigismund in 1437, his son-in-law, Albert II of Germany, assumed the title King of Hungary. He died, however, in 1439. The first Hungarian Bible translation was completed in 1439 just before. For a half year in 1437, there was an anti-feudal and anti-clerical peasant revolt in Transylvania which was strongly influenced by Hussite ideas. From a small noble family in Transylvania, John Hunyadi grew to become one of the country's most powerful lords, thanks to his outstanding capabilities as a mercenary commander. In 1446, the parliament elected him governor, then regent. He was a successful crusader against the Ottoman Turks, one of his greatest victories the siege of Belgrade in 1456. Hunyadi defended the city against the onslaught of the Ottoman Sultan Merm II. During the siege, Pope Calixtus III ordered the bells of every European church to be rung every day at noon as a call for believers to pray for the defenders of the city. However, in many countries, the news of the victory arrived before the order, and the ringing of the church bells at noon was transformed into a commemoration of the victory. The popes did not withdraw the order, and Catholic churches still ring the noon bell in the Christian world to this day. The last strong Hungarian king was Matthias Corvinus, the son of John Hunyadi. His accession represented the first time in the history of the medieval Hungarian kingdom that a member of the nobility without dynastic ancestry mounted the royal throne. Although very prominent in the governing of the Kingdom of Hungary, Matthias's father John Hunyadi was never crowned king or contracted a dynastic marriage. Matthias was a true Renaissance prince, a successful military leader and administrator an outstanding linguist, a learned astrologer, and an enlightened patron of the arts and learning. Although he regularly convened the Diet and expanded the lesser nobles' powers in the counties, he exercised absolute rule over Hungary by means of a huge secular bureaucracy. Matthias set out to build a realm that would expand to the south and northwest, while he also implemented internal reforms. The serfs considered Matthias a just ruler, because he protected them from excessive demands and other abuses by the magnates. Like his father, Matthias desired to strengthen the Kingdom of Hungary to the point where it could become the foremost regional power, indeed strong enough to push back the Ottoman Empire, towards that end he deemed it necessary to conquer large parts of the Holy Roman Empire. Matthias's standing mercenary army was called the Black Army of Hungary. It was an unusually large army for its time, 
and it secured a series of victories in the Austrian-Hungarian War by capturing parts of Austria in 1485, as well as parts of Bohemia in the Bohemian War of 1477-88. In 1467, Matthias and his Black Army fought against Moldavia. In this case, the attempt to expand Hungarian territories was unsuccessful when Matthias lost the Battle of Bea. In 1479, however, the Hungarian army destroyed the Ottoman and Wallachian troops at the Battle of Breadfield under the leadership of General Pal Kinesi. Matthias's library, the Bibliotheca Corvin Iana, was Europe's greatest collection of historical chronicles and works of philosophy and science in the 15th century, and second in size only to the Vatican Library in Rome, which mainly contained religious materials. His library is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Mashes died without a legal successor, a circumstance that engendered a serious political crisis in the Hungarian Kingdom. The Period of Reforms Events of the 1490-1526 period in Hungarian history created conditions that would lead to a loss of independence unforeseen by contemporary observers and policy makers. Besides internal conflicts, the Hungarian state was gravely threatened by the expanding Ottoman Empire. By the early 16th century, the Ottoman Empire directly south of Hungary had become the second most populous political state in the world, which facilitated the raising of the largest armies of the era. However, Hungarian policy makers at the time were not as conscious of this threat as they should have been. Instead of preparing for the defense of the country against foreign powers, Hungarian magnates were much more focused on the threat to their privileges from a strong royal power. Not wanting another assertive king after the death of the childless Matthias Corvinus, the magnates arranged for the accession of King Vladislaus II of Bohemia precisely because of his notorious weakness, in fact, he was known as King Dobe or Dobbs for his habit of accepting with that word every paper laid before him. During his reign, the central power began to experience severe financial difficulties, largely due to the enlargement of feudal lands at his expense. The magnates also dismantled the administrative systems in the country that had worked so successfully for Matthias. The country's defences declined as border guards and castle garrisons went unpaid, fortresses fell into disrepair, and initiatives to increase taxes to reinforce defences were stifled. Hungary's international role was neutralised, its political stability shaken, and social progress was deadlocked. Revolution and War of Independence in 1514, the weakened and aging Vladislaus faced a major peasant rebellion led by Georgi Dasa. It was ruthlessly crushed by the Hungarian nobles led by Janos Sapolya. The resulting degradation of order paved the way for Ottoman ambitions to acquire Hungarian territory. In 1521, the strongest Hungarian fortress in the south, Nanderfi Herver, fell to the Turks, and in 1526, the Hungarian army was crushed at the Battle of Mohács. The young King Louis II of Hungary and Bohemia died in the battle along with the leader of the Hungarian army, Pal Tamori. The early appearance of Protestantism further worsened internal unity in the anarchical country. After the Ottomans achieved their first decisive victory over the Hungarian army at the Battle of Mohax in 1526, their forces conquered large parts of the Kingdom of Hungary and continued their expansion until 1556. This period was characterized by political chaos. A divided Hungarian nobility elected two kings simultaneously, 
Janosch Sapelia and the Austrian Ferdinand of Habsburg. Armed conflicts between the new rival monarchs further weakened the country. With the Turkish conquest of Buda in 1541, Hungary was riven into three parts. Austria-Hungary Economy World War I The northwestern part of the Old Kingdom of Hungary remained under Habsburg rule as the realm of King Ferdinand. Although initially independent, it would later become a part of the Habsburg monarchy under the informal name Royal Hungary. The Habsburg emperors would from then on be crowned also as kings of Hungary. The Turks were unable to conquer the northern and western parts of Hungary. The eastern part of the kingdom at first became an independent principality, but was gradually brought under Turkish rule as a vassal state of the Ottoman Empire. The remaining central area, including the capital of Buda, became a province of the Ottoman Empire. Much of the land was devastated by recurrent warfare. Most small Hungarian settlements disappeared. Rural people living in the new Ottoman provinces could survive only in larger settlements known as Haas towns, which were owned and protected directly by the Sultan. The Turks were indifferent to the Christian denominations practiced by their Hungarian subjects. For this reason, a majority of Hungarians living under Ottoman rule became Protestant, as Habsburg counter-reformation efforts could not penetrate the Ottoman lands. Largely throughout this time, Pasini acted as the capital of the Kingdom of Hungary, the town in which the Hungarian kings were crowned and the seat of the Diet of Hungary. Nagasambat acted in turn as the religious centre beginning in 1541. The vast majority of the soldiers in service in the Ottoman fortresses in the territory of Hungary were Orthodox and Muslim Balkan Slavs, instead of ethnic Turkish people. Southern Slavs also served as Akhanks and other light troops intended for pillaging in the territory of present-day Hungary. In 1558 the Transylvanian Diet of Turda declared free practice of both the Catholic and Lutheran religions, but prohibited Calvinism. In 1568, the Diet extended this freedom, declaring that, it is not allowed to anybody to intimidate anybody with captivity or expulsion for his religion. Four religions were declared as accepted while Orthodox Christianity was tolerated. When Hungary entered the Thirty Years' War of 1618-48, Royal Hungary joined the Catholic side, then Transylvania joined the Protestant side. In 1686, two years after the unsuccessful Battle of Buda, a renewed European campaign was started to retake the Hungarian capital. This time, the Army of the Holy League was twice as large, at over 74,000 men, including German, Croat, Dutch, Hungarian, English, Spanish, Czech, Italian, French, Burgundian, Danish and Swedish soldiers, along with other Europeans as volunteers, artillerymen and officers and the Christian forces reconquered Buda in the Second Battle of Buda. The Second Battle of Mohax was a crushing defeat for the Turks. In the next few years, all of the former Hungarian lands, except areas near Timisoara, were taken back from the Turks. At the end of the 17th century, Transylvania also became part of Hungary again. In the Treaty of Karlowitz of 1699, these territorial changes were officially recognized, and in 1718, the entire Kingdom of Hungary was removed from Ottoman rule. As a consequence of the constant warfare between Hungarians and Ottoman Turks, 
population growth was stunted and the network of medieval settlements with their urbanized bourgeois inhabitants perished. The 150 years of Turkish wars fundamentally changed the ethnic composition of Hungary. As a result of demographic losses, including deportations and massacres, the number of ethnic Hungarians at the end of the Turkish period was substantially diminished. There was a series of anti-Habsburg and anti-Catholic uprisings between 1604 and 1711, rebelling against Austrian rule and restrictions on non-Catholic Christian denominations. With the exception of the last, all took place within the territories of Royal Hungary, but were usually organized from Transylvania. The last uprising was led by Francis II Rakoczy, who took power as the ruling prince of Hungary after the declared dethronement of the Habsburgs in 1707 at the Diet of Onod. Despite some successes by the anti Habsburg Curic army, such as the near capture of the Austrian Emperor Joseph I by Adam Balog, the rebels lost the decisive Battle of Trincine in 1708. When Austrians defeated the Curica Uprising in 1711, Rakoczy was in Poland. He later fled to France, then to Turkey, and died in 1735 in Tekirda. Afterward, to make further armed resistance infeasible, the Austrians demolished most of the castles on the border between the now-reclaimed territories occupied earlier by the Ottomans and Royal Hungary. Hungarian nationalism emerged among intellectuals influenced by the Enlightenment and Romanticism. It grew rapidly, providing the foundation for the Revolution of 1848-49. There was a special focus on the Magyar language, which replaced Latin as the language of the state and the schools. In the 1820s, Emperor Francis I was forced to convene the Hungarian Diet, which inaugurated a reform period. Nevertheless, progress was slowed by the nobles who clung to their privileges. Therefore, the achievements were mostly of a symbolic character such as the progress of the Magyar language. Count Istvan Zekinii, the nation's most prominent statesman, recognized the urgent need for modernization, and his message was taken to heart by other Hungarian political leaders. The Hungarian parliament was reconvened in 1825 to handle financial needs. A liberal party emerged focusing on the peasantry and proclaiming an understanding of the needs of the laborers. Lajos Kossuth emerged as leader of the lower gentry in the parliament. Habsburg monarchs, desiring an agrarian, traditional Hungary, tried to hinder the industrialization of the country. A remarkable upswing started as the nation concentrated on modernization despite Habsburg obstruction of all important liberal laws concerning civil and political rights and economic reforms. Many reformers were imprisoned by the authorities. On March 15, 1848, mass demonstrations in Pest and Buda enabled Hungarian reformists to push through a list of 12 demands. The Hungarian Diet took advantage of the revolutions of 1848 in the Habsburg areas to enact the April Laws, a comprehensive legislative program of dozens of civil rights reforms. Faced with revolution both at home and in Hungary, Austrian Emperor Ferdinand I at first had to accept Hungarian demands. After the Austrian uprising was suppressed, a new emperor Franz Joseph replaced his epileptic uncle Ferdinand. Franz Joseph rejected all reforms and started to arm against Hungary. A year later, in April 1849, an independent government of Hungary was established. The new government seceded from the Austrian Empire. 
The House of Habsburg was dethroned in the Hungarian part of the Austrian Empire and the First Republic of Hungary was proclaimed, with Lajos Kossuth as governor and president. The first prime minister was Lajos Spathuni. Emperor Franz Joseph and his advisors skillfully manipulated the new nation's ethnic minorities, the Croatian, Serbian and Romanian peasantry, led by priests and officers firmly loyal to the Habsburgs, and induced them to rebel against the new government. The Hungarians were supported by the vast majority of the Slovaks, Germans and Rusins of the country, and almost all the Jews, as well as by a large number of Polish, Austrian and Italian volunteers. Many members of the non-Hungarian nationalities secured high positions in the Hungarian army, for example General Janos Damjanic, an ethnic Serb who became a Hungarian national hero through his command of the 3rd Hungarian Army Corps. Initially, the Hungarian forces managed to hold their ground. In July 1849, the Hungarian parliament proclaimed and enacted the most progressive ethnic and minority rights in the world, but it was too late. To subdue the Hungarian Revolution, Franz Joseph has prepared his troops against Hungary and obtained help from the Gendarme of Europe, Russian Tsar Nicholas I. In June, Russian armies invaded Transylvania in concert with Austrian armies marching on Hungary from western fronts on which they had been victorious. The Russian and Austrian forces overwhelmed the Hungarian army, and General Artur Gorgi surrendered in August 1849. The Austrian Marshal Julius Freiherr von Hainau then became governor of Hungary for a few months and, on October 6 ordered the execution of 13 leaders of the Hungarian army as well as Prime Minister Bathyany. Lajos Kossuth escaped into exile. Following the War of 1848-1849, the country sank into passive resistance. Archduke Albrecht von Habsburg was appointed governor of the Kingdom of Hungary, and this time was remembered for Germanization pursued with the help of Czech officers. Vienna realized that political reform was unavoidable to secure the integrity of the Habsburg Empire. Major military defeats, such as the Battle of Konich Rats in 1866, forced Emperor Franz Joseph to accept internal reforms. To appease Hungarian separatists, the Emperor made an equitable deal with Hungary, the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867 negotiated by Ferenc Dayak, by which the dual monarchy of Austria-Hungary came into existence. The two realms were governed separately by two parliaments from two capitals, with a common monarch and common foreign and military policies. Economically, the empire was a customs union. The first prime minister of Hungary after the compromise was Count Gyula Andrasi. The old Hungarian constitution was restored, and Franz Joseph was crowned king of Hungary. In 1868, Hungarian and Croatian assemblies concluded the Croatian-Hungarian agreement by which Croatia was recognized as an autonomous region. The new nation of Austria-Hungary was geographically the second largest country in Europe after the Russian Empire. Its territories were appraised at 621,540 square kilometers in 1905. After the Russia and the German Empire, it was the third most populous country in Europe. Hungarian nationalists demanded education in the Magyar language, a position that united Catholics and Protestants opposed to instruction in Latin as desired by Catholic bishops. In the Hungarian Diet of 1832-36, the conflict between Catholic laymen and clergy sharpened considerably, and a mixed commission was established. It offered the Protestants certain limited concessions. 
The basic issue of this religious and educational struggle was how to promote Magyar language and Magyar nationalism and achieve more independence from German Austria. The landed nobility controlled the villages and monopolized political roles. In Parliament, the magnates held life memberships in the upper house, but the gentry dominated the lower house and, after 1830, parliamentary life. The tension between crown and country remained a constant political fixture as the Compromise of 1867 enabled the Magyar nobility to run the country, but left the emperor with control over foreign and military policies. Conflicts between magnates and gentry appeared regarding protection against cheap food imports, the church-state problem, and the constitutional crisis. The gentry gradually lost their power locally and rebuilt their political base more on office holding rather than land ownership. They depended more and more on the state apparatus and were reluctant to challenge it. The era witnessed significant economic development in the rural areas. The formerly backwards Hungarian economy became relatively modern and industrialized by the turn of the 20th century, although agriculture remained dominant. In 1873, the old capital Buda and Obuda were officially merged with the third city, Pest, thus creating the new metropolis of Budapest. The dynamic Pest grew into the country's administrative, political, economic, trade and cultural hub. Technological advancement accelerated industrialization and urbanization. The gross national product per capita grew roughly 1.45% per year from 1870 to 1913. That level of growth compared very favorably to that of other European nations such as Britain, France and Germany. The leading industries in this economic expansion were electricity and electrotechnology, telecommunications, and transport. The key symbols of industrial progress were the Gans Concern and Tungsram Works. Many of the state institutions and modern administrative systems of Hungary were established during this period. The census of the Hungarian state in 1910 recorded the following population distribution, Hungarian 54.5%, Romanian 16.1%, Slovak 10.7%, and German 10.4%. The religious denomination with the greatest number of adherents was Roman Catholicism, followed by the Calvinism, Greek Orthodoxy, Greek Catholicism, Lutheranism, and Judaism. After the assassination of the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo on June 28, 1914, the Hungarian Prime Minister Istvan Tissa tried to avoid the outbreak of war in Europe, but his diplomatic attempts remained unsuccessful. A general war began on July 28 with a declaration of war on Serbia by Austria-Hungary. Austria-Hungary drafted 9 million soldiers in World War I, of which 4 million were from the Kingdom of Hungary. During the First World War, Austria-Hungary fought on the side of Germany, Bulgaria and Ottoman Empire the so-called Central Powers. They conquered Serbia easily, and Romania declared war. The Central Powers then conquered southern Romania and the Romanian capital of Bucharest. In November 1916, Emperor Franz Joseph died, the new monarch, Emperor Charles I of Austria, sympathized with the pacifists in his realm. With great difficulty, the Central Powers repelled the attacks of the Russian Empire. The Eastern Front of the so-called powers allied with Russia completely collapsed. Austria-Hungary withdrew from the defeated countries. On the Italian front, the Austro-Hungarian army could not make more successful progress against Italy after January 1918. 
Despite great successes on the Eastern Front, Germany suffered complete defeat in the more determinant Western Front. By 1918, the economic situation had deteriorated alarmingly in Austria-Hungary, strikes in factories were organized by leftist and pacifist movements, and uprisings in the army had become commonplace. In the capital cities of Vienna and Budapest, the Austrian and the Hungarian leftist liberal movements and their leaders supported the separatism of ethnic minorities. Austria-Hungary signed the Armistice of Villa Giusti in Padua on November 3, 1918. In October 1918, the personal union between Austria and Hungary was dissolved. In 1918, as a result of the German defeat on the Western Front in World War I, the Austro-Hungarian monarchy collapsed. French Entente troops landed in Greece to rearm the defeated countries of Romania and Serbia and provide military assistance to the newly formed country of Czechoslovakia. Despite a general armistice agreement, the Balkan French army organized new campaigns against Hungary with the help of the Czechoslovak, Romanian and Serbian governments. Former Prime Minister Istvan Tisza was murdered in Budapest by a gang of soldiers during the Astor Revolution of October 1918. On October 31, 1918, the success of the Astor Revolution in Budapest brought the leftist liberal Count Mihaly Karolyi to power as Prime Minister. Karolyi was a devotee of the Entente powers from the beginning of the war. On November 13, 1918, Charles I surrendered his powers as King of Hungary, however, he did not abdicate, a technicality that made a return to the throne possible. A first Hungarian Republic, the Hungarian Democratic Republic, was proclaimed on November 16, 1918 with Karolyi named as President. Karolyi tried to build Hungary as the Eastern Switzerland and persuade non-Hungarian minorities to stay loyal to the country, offering them autonomy. However these efforts came too late. In response to Woodrow Wilson's conception of pacifism, Karolyi ordered the full disarmament of the Hungarian army, thus Hungary remained without a national defense at a time of particular vulnerability. Surrounding countries were not hesitant to arm themselves. On November 5, 1918, the Serbian army, with French support, attacked southern parts of the country. On November 8, the Czechoslovak army attacked northern parts of Hungary, and on December 2, the Romanian army started to attack the eastern parts of Hungary. The Karolyi government made all armed associations illegal, and introduced proposals to defend the integrity of the country, but he failed to reorganize the armed forces during his governance. These measures failed to stem popular discontent, especially when the Entente powers began awarding pieces of Hungary's traditional territories to Romania, Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia, giving priority to ethno-linguistic criteria over historical ones. French and Serbian forces occupied the southern parts of Hungary. By February 1919, the new Hungarian government had lost all popular support in view of its failures on both domestic and military fronts. On March 21, 1919, after the Entente military representative demanded more and more territorial concessions from Hungary, Karolyi signed all the concessions presented to him and resigned. The Communist Party of Hungary, led by Bela Kun, allied itself with the Hungarian Social Democratic Party, came to power and proclaimed the Hungarian Soviet Republic. Social Democrat Sander Garbe was the official head of government, but the Soviet Republic was dominated de facto by Bela Kun, who was in charge of foreign affairs. 
The Communists the Reds came to power largely thanks its organized fighting force, and they promised that Hungary would defend its territory without conscription, possibly with the help of the Soviet Red Army. The Red Army of Hungary was a small voluntary army of 53,000 men, and most of its soldiers were armed factory workers from Budapest. Initially, Kun's regime achieved some military successes, under the command of its genius strategist Colonel Oral Stromfeld, the Hungarian Red Army ousted Czechoslovak troops from the north and planned to march against the Romanian army in the east. In terms of domestic policy, the communist government nationalized industrial and commercial enterprises, socialized housing, transport, banking, medicine, cultural institutions and all land holdings of more than 400,000 square meters. The support of the communists proved to be short-lived in Budapest, however, and they had never been popular in country towns and countryside. In the aftermath of a coup attempt, the government took a series of actions referred to as the Red Terror, murdering several hundred people. The Soviet Red Army was never able to aid the new Hungarian Republic. Despite the great military successes against the Czechoslovakian army, the communist leaders gave back all recaptured lands. That attitude demoralized the voluntary army the Hungarian Red Army was dissolved before it could successfully complete its campaigns. In the face of domestic backlash and an advancing Romanian force in the Hungarian-Romanian War of 1919, Bela Kun and most of his comrades fled to Austria, and Budapest was occupied on August 6. Kun and his followers took along numerous art treasures and the gold stocks of the National Bank. All these events, and in particular the final military defeat, led to a deep feeling of dislike among the general population against the Soviet Union and the Hungarian Jews. The new fighting force in Hungary were the conservative royalists counter-revolutionaries the Whites. These, who had been organizing in Vienna and established a counter-government in Szeged, assumed power led by Istvan Bethlen, a Transylvanian aristocrat, and Miklos Horty, the former commander-in-chief of the Austro-Hungarian Navy. The conservatives determined the Karolyi government and communists as capital treason. Between the two world wars In the absence of a strong national police force or regular military forces, a white terror began in Western Hungary by half-regular and half-militarist detachments that spread throughout the country. Many errant communists and other leftists were tortured and executed without trial. Radical whites launched pogroms against the Jews, displayed as the cause of all territorial losses of Hungary. The most notorious commander of the whites was Pal Prona. The evacuating Romanian army pillaged the country, livestock, machinery and agricultural products were carried to Romania in hundreds of freight cars. On November 16, 1919, with the consent of Romanian forces, the army of right-wing former Admiral Miklos Horty marched into Budapest. His government gradually restored order and stopped terror but thousands of sympathizers of the Karolyi and Kun regimes were imprisoned. Radical political movements were suppressed. In March 1920, the parliament restored the Hungarian monarchy as a regency but postponed the election of a king until civil disorder had subsided. Instead, Horty was elected regent and empowered, among other things, to appoint Hungary's prime minister veto legislation, convene or dissolve the parliament, and command the armed forces. Hungary's assent to the Treaty of Trianon on June 4, 1920 ratified the decision of the victorious Entente powers to redraw the country's borders. 
The treaty required Hungary to surrender more than two-thirds of its pre-war territories. The goal of this measure was to permit the minority populations of the former Austria-Hungary to reside in states dominated by their own ethnicity, but many Hungarians still lived in such territories. As a result, nearly one-third of the 10 million ethnic Hungarians found themselves resident outside their diminished homeland as minorities in hostile political units. New international borders separated Hungary's industrial base from its sources of raw materials and its former markets for agricultural and industrial products. Hungary lost 84% of its timber resources, 43% of its arable land, and 83% of its iron ore. Although post Trianon Hungary retained 90% of the engineering and printing industry of the former Kingdom of Hungary, only 11% of timber and 16% iron was retained. In addition, 61% of arable land, 74% of public road, 65% of canals, 62% of railroads, 64% of hard surface roads, 83% of pig iron output, 55% of industrial plants, 100% of gold, silver, copper, mercury, and salt mines, and most of all, 67% of credit and banking institutions of the former Kingdom of Hungary lay within the territory of Hungary's neighbours. Horty appointed Count Pal Teleki as Prime Minister in July 1920. His government issued a numerous clauses law that limited the admission of political insecure elements to universities and took initial steps towards fulfilling a promise of major land reform by dividing about 3,850 km to from the largest estates into small holdings Indiana order to quiet rural discontent. Teleki's government resigned, however, after Charles the former Emperor of Austria and King of Hungary, attempted unsuccessfully to retake Hungary's throne in March 1921. Hungarian People's Republic The return of the former Emperor caused a split among conservative politicians who favoured a Habsburg restoration and nationalist right-wing radicals who supported the election of a native Hungarian king. Count Istvan Bethlen a non-affiliated right-wing member of the parliament, took advantage of this rift to form a new party of unity under his leadership. Horty then appointed Bethlen prime minister. Charles died soon after he failed a second time to reclaim the throne in October 1921. As prime minister, Bethlen dominated Hungarian politics between 1921 and 1931. He fashioned a political machine by amending the electoral law, providing jobs in the expanding bureaucracy to his supporters, and manipulating elections in rural areas. Bethlen restored order to the country by giving the radical counter-revolutionaries payoffs and government jobs in exchange for ceasing their campaign of terror against Jews and leftists. Hungarian Soviet Republic in 1921, Bethlen made a deal with the Social Democrats and trade unions to legalize their activities and free political prisoners in return for their pledge to refrain from spreading anti-Hungarian propaganda, calling political strikes, and attempting to organize the peasantry. Bethlen brought Hungary into the League of Nations in 1922 and out of international isolation by signing a treaty of friendship with Italy in 1927. Overall, Bethlen sought to pursue a strategy of strengthening the economy and building relations with stronger nations. The revision of the Treaty of Trianon rose to the top of Hungary's political agenda. Revision of the treaty had such a broad backing in Hungary that Bethlen used it, at least in part, to deflect criticism of his economic, social and political policies. Counter-Revolution Trianon Hungary and the Regency 
The worldwide Great Depression that began in 1929 induced a drop in the standard of living and the political mood of the country shifted further towards the right. In 1932, Horty appointed a new Prime Minister, Jayola Gombos, who changed the course of Hungarian policy towards closer cooperation with Germany and started an effort to Magyarize the few remaining ethnic minorities in Hungary. Gombos signed a trade agreement with Germany that helped Hungary's economy out of depression, but made Hungary dependent on the German economy for both raw materials and markets. Adolf Hitler appealed to Hungarian desires for territorial revisionism, while extreme right-wing organizations such as the Arrow Cross Party increasingly embraced extreme Nazi policies including those relating to the suppression and victimization of Jews. The government passed the first Jewish law in 1938. The law established a quota system to limit Jewish involvement in the Hungarian economy. In 1938, Bela Imrady became prime minister. Imrady's attempts to improve Hungary's diplomatic relations with the United Kingdom initially made him very unpopular in Germany and Italy. In light of Germany's Anschluss with Austria in March, he realized that he could not afford to alienate Germany and Italy for long. In the autumn of 1938, his foreign policy became very much pro-German and pro-Italian. World War II Post-war communist period Transition to communism Stalinist era Nationalization of the economy Rivalry between communist leaders 1956 revolution Post-revolution era End of communism Third Republic Economic Reform First Orban Government, 1998-2002 MSZP, 2002-2010 Second Orban Government, 2010-present Historiography Intent on amassing a base of power in Hungarian right-wing politics Imrady began to suppress political rivals. The increasingly influential Arrow Cross Party was harassed and eventually banned by Imrady's administration. As Imrady drifted further to the right, he proposed that the government be reorganized along totalitarian lines and drafted a harsher second Jewish law. Parliament, under the new government of Pal Teleki, approved the second Jewish law in 1939, which greatly restricted Jewish involvement in the economy, culture and society and, significantly, defined Jews by race instead of religion. This definition significantly and negatively altered the status of those who had formerly converted from Judaism to Christianity. Nazi Germany and Fascist Italy sought to enforce the claims of Hungarians living in territories Hungary lost in 1920 with the signing of the Treaty of Trianon peacefully, and the two Vienna Awards returned parts of Czechoslovakia and Transylvania to Hungary. On November 20, 1940, under pressure from Germany, Pal Teleki affiliated Hungary with the Tripartite Pact. In December 1940, he also signed an ephemeral Treaty of Eternal Friendship with Yugoslavia. A few months later, after a Yugoslavian coup threatened the success of the planned German invasion of the Soviet Union, Hitler asked the Hungarians to support his invasion of Yugoslavia. He promised to return some former Hungarian territories lost after World War I in exchange for cooperation. Unable to prevent Hungary's participation in the war alongside Germany, Teleki committed suicide. The right-wing radical Laszlo Bardasi succeeded him as prime minister. Eventually Hungary annexed small parts of present-day Slovenia, Croatia and Serbia. 
After war broke out on the Eastern Front, many Hungarian officials argued for participation in the war on the German side so as not to encourage Hitler into favoring Romania in the event of border revisions in Transylvania. Hungary entered the war and on July 1, 1941, at the direction of the Germans, the Hungarian carpet group advanced far into southern Russia. At the Battle of Amman, the Gyrshatist participated in the encirclement of the 6th Soviet Army and the 12th Soviet Army. Twenty Soviet divisions were captured or destroyed. Worried about Hungary's increasing reliance on Germany, Admiral Horty forced Bardasi to resign and replaced him with Miklos Kale, a veteran conservative of Bethlen's government. Calais continued Bardasi's policy of supporting Germany against the Red Army, while he also surreptitiously entered into negotiations with the Western powers. During the Battle of Stalingrad, the Hungarian Second Army suffered terrible losses. Shortly after the fall of Stalingrad in January 1943, the Hungarian Second Army effectively ceased to exist as a functioning military unit. Secret negotiations with the British and Americans continued. Aware of Calais' deceit and fearing that Hungary might conclude a separate peace, Hitler ordered Nazi troops to launch Operation Margarethi and occupy Hungary in March 1944. Domstohi, an avid supporter of the Nazis, become the new prime minister with the aid of a Nazi military governor, Edmund Wiesenmayer. The infamous SS Colonel Adolf Eichmann went to Hungary to oversee the large-scale deportations of Jews to German death camps in occupied Poland. Between May 15 and July 9, 1944, the Hungarians deported 437,402 Jews to the Auschwitz concentration camp. In August 1944, Horty replaced Stohi with the anti-fascist general Giza Lakatos. Under the Lakatos regime, the acting interior minister Bela Horvath ordered Hungarian gendarmes to prevent any Hungarian citizens from being deported. In September 1944, Soviet forces crossed the Hungarian border. On October 15, 1944, Horty announced that Hungary had signed an armistice with the Soviet Union. The Hungarian army ignored the armistice. The Germans launched Operation Panzerfaust and, by kidnapping his son, forced Horty to abrogate the armistice depose the Lakatos government, and name the leader of the Arrow Cross Party, Frank Selassie, as Prime Minister. Selassie became Prime Minister of a new fascist government of national unity and Horty abdicated. In cooperation with the Nazis, Selassie restarted the deportations of Jews, particularly in Budapest. Thousands more Jews were killed by Hungarian Arrow Cross members. The retreating German army demolished the rail, road, and communications systems. On December 28, 1944, a provisional government was formed in Hungary under acting Prime Minister Bela Miklos. Miklos and Selassie's rival governments each claimed legitimacy the Germans and pro-German Hungarians loyal to Selassie fought on, as the territory effectively controlled by the Arrow Cross regime shrunk gradually. The Red Army completed the encirclement of Budapest on December 29, 1944 and the Battle of Budapest began, it continued into February 1945. Most of what remained of the Hungarian First Army was destroyed about 320 kilometers north of Budapest between January 1 and February 16, 1945. Budapest unconditionally surrendered to the Soviet Red Army on February 13, 1945. On January 20, 1945, 
representatives of the Hungarian provisional government signed an armistice in Moscow. Selassie's government fled the country by the end of March. Officially, Soviet operations in Hungary ended on April 4, 1945, when the last German troops were expelled. On May 7, 1945 General Alfred Jodl, the German chief of staff, signed the unconditional surrender of all German forces. As regards Hungary's World War II casualties, Thomas Stark of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences has provided a detailed assessment of losses from 1941 to 1945 in Hungary. He calculated military losses at 300,000310,000, including 110,120,000 killed in battle and 200,000 missing in action and prisoners of war in the Soviet Union. Hungarian military losses include 110,000 men who were conscripted from the annexed territories of Greater Hungary in Slovakia, Romania, and Yugoslavia and the deaths of 20,0025,000 Jews conscripted for army labor units. Civilian losses of about 80,000 include 45,500 killed in the 1944-1945 military campaign and in air attacks, and the genocide of Romani people of 28,000 persons. Jewish Holocaust victims totaled 600,000. See World War II Casualties the Soviet Army occupied Hungary from September 1944 until April 1945. The siege of Budapest lasted almost two months, from December 1944 to February 1945, and the city suffered widespread destruction, including the demolition of all the Danube bridges, which were blown up by the Germans in an effort to slow the Soviet advance. Encyclopedia Humana Hungarica By signing the Peace Treaty of Paris of 1947, Hungary again lost all the territories that it had gained between 1938 and 1941. Neither the Western Allies nor the Soviet Union supported any change in Hungary's pre-1938 borders, which was the primary motive behind the Hungarian involvement in the war. The Soviet Union itself annexed Subcarpathia, which is today part of Ukraine. The Treaty of Peace with Hungary signed on February 10, 1947 declared that, the decisions of the Vienna Award of November 2, 1938, are declared null and void, and Hungarian boundaries were fixed along the former frontiers as they existed on January 1, 1938 except for a minor loss of territory on the Czechoslovakian border. Many of the communist leaders of 1919 returned from Moscow. The first major violation of civil rights was suffered by the ethnic German minority, half of which were deported to Germany in 1946-1948, although the great majority of them had not supported Germany during the war and were not members of any pro-Nazi movement. There was a forced exchange of population between Hungary and Czechoslovakia, which involved about 70,000 Hungarians living in Slovakia and somewhat smaller numbers of ethnic Slovaks living in the territory of Hungary. Unlike the Germans, these people were allowed to carry some of their property with them. The Soviets originally planned for a piecemeal introduction of the communist regime in Hungary, therefore when they set up a provisional government in Debrecen on December 21, 1944, they were careful to include representatives of several moderate parties. Following the demands of the Western Allies for a democratic election, the Soviets authorized the only essentially free election held in post-war Eastern Europe in Hungary in November 1945. This was also the first election held in Hungary on the basis of universal franchise. P. 
people voted for party lists, not for individual candidates. At the elections, the Independent Smallholders Party, a center-right peasant party, won 57% of the vote. Despite the hopes of the communists and the Soviets that the distribution of the aristocratic estates among the poor peasants would increase their popularity, the Hungarian Communist Party received only 17% of the votes. The Soviet commander in Hungary, Marshal Varashilov, refused to allow the smallholders party to form a government on their own. Under Varashilov's pressure, the smallholders organized a coalition government including the communists, the social democrats and the national peasant party, in which the communists held some of the key posts. On February 1, 1946 Hungary was declared a republic, and the leader of the smallholders, Zoltán Tildy, became president. He handed over the office of prime minister to Ferenc Nagy. Matthias Rakosi, leader of the Communist Party, became deputy prime minister. Another leading communist, Laszlo Rajk, became minister of the interior responsible for controlling law enforcement, and in this position established the Hungarian security police. The communists exercised constant pressure on the smallholders both inside and outside the government. They nationalized industrial companies, banned religious civil organizations and occupied key positions in local public administration. In February 1947, the police began arresting leaders of the smallholders party, charging them with conspiracy against the republic. Several prominent figures decided to emigrate or were forced to escape abroad including Prime Minister Ferenc Nagy in May 1947. Later, Matthias Rakosi boasted that he had dealt with his partners in the government, one by one, cutting them off like slices of salami. At the next parliamentary election in August 1947, the Communists committed widespread election fraud with absentee ballots, but even so, they only managed to increase their share from 17% to 24% in Parliament. The Social Democrats received 15% in contrast to their 17% in 1945. The Smallholders Party lost much of its popularity and ended up with 15%, but their former voters turned towards three new centre-right parties which seemed more determined to resist the Communist onslaught. Their combined share of the total votes was 35%. Faced with their second failure at the polls, the communists changed tactics, and, under new orders from Moscow, decided to eschew democratic facades and speed up the communist takeover. In June 1948, the Social Democratic Party was forced to merge with the Communist Party to create the Hungarian Working People's Party, which was dominated by the Communists. Anti-Communist leaders of the Social Democrats, such as Karoly Pyre and Anna Kethley, were forced into exile or excluded from the party. Soon after, President Zoltán Tildy was also removed from his position and replaced by a fully cooperative Social Democrat, Arpad Sekasits. Ultimately, all Democratic parties were organized into a so-called People's Front in February 1949, thereby losing even the vestiges of their autonomy. The leader of the People's Front was Rakosi himself. Opposition parties were simply declared illegal and their leaders arrested or forced into exile. On August 18, 1949, the parliament passed the Hungarian Constitution of 1949, which was modeled after the 1936 Constitution of the Soviet Union. The name of the country changed to the People's Republic of Hungary the country of the workers and peasants where every authority is held by the working people. 
socialism was declared to be the main goal of the nation. A new coat of arms was adopted with communist symbols such the red star, hammer and sickle. Matthias Rakosi, who as a chief secretary of the Hungarian Working People's Party was de facto the leader of Hungary, possessed practically unlimited power and demanded complete obedience from fellow members of the party, including his two most trusted colleagues, Erger and Mihaly Farkas. All three of them returned to Hungary from Moscow, where they had spent long years and had close ties to high-ranking Soviet leaders. Their main rivals in the party were the Hungarian communists who led the illegal party during the war and were considerably more popular within party ranks. Their most influential leader, Laszlo Rajk, who was Minister of Foreign Affairs at the time, was arrested in May 1949. He was accused of rather surreal crimes, such as spying for Western imperialist powers and for Yugoslavia. At his trial in September 1949, he made a forced confession to be an agent of Miklos Horty, Leon Trotsky, Josip Broz Tito and Western imperialism. He also admitted that he had taken part in a murder plot against Matthias Rakosi and Erger. Rajk was found guilty and executed. In the next three years, other leaders of the party deemed untrustworthy, such as former Social Democrats or other Hungarian illegal communists such as Janos Kader, were also arrested and imprisoned on trumped-up charges. The showcase trial of Rajk is considered the beginning of the worst period of the Rakosi dictatorship. Rakosi now attempted to impose totalitarian rule on Hungary. The centrally orchestrated personality cult focused on him and Joseph Stalin soon reached unprecedented proportions. Rakosi's images and busts were everywhere, and all public speakers were required to glorify his wisdom and leadership. In the meantime, the secret police, led through Gaber Peter by Rakosi himself, mercilessly persecuted all class enemies and enemies of the people. An estimated 2,000 people were executed and over 100,000 were imprisoned. Some 44,000 ended up in forced labor camps where many died due to horrible work conditions, poor food, and practically no medical care. Another 15,000 people, mostly former aristocrats, industrialists, military generals, and other upper-class people were deported from the capital and other cities to countryside villages where they were forced to perform hard agricultural labor. These policies were opposed by some members of the Hungarian Working People's Party and around 200,000 were expelled by Rakosi from the organization. By 1950, the state controlled most of the economy, as all large and mid-sized industrial companies, plants, mines, banks of all kind as well as all companies of retail and foreign trade were nationalized without any compensation. Slavishly following Soviet economic policies, Rakosi declared that Hungary would become a country of iron and steel even though Hungary lacked iron ore completely. The forced development of heavy industry served military purposes, it was meant as preparation for the impending World War III against Western imperialism. A disproportionate amount of the country's resources were spent on building whole new industrial cities and plants from scratch, while much of the country was still in ruins since the war. Traditional strengths of Hungary, such as the agricultural and textile industries, were neglected. Large agricultural latifundia were divided and distributed among poor peasants already in 1945. In agriculture, the government tried to force independent peasants to enter cooperatives in which they would become merely paid laborers, but many of them stubbornly resisted. 
the government retaliated with ever higher requirements of compulsory food quotas imposed on peasants' produce. Rich peasants, called Kolaks in Russian, were declared class enemies and suffered all sorts of discrimination, including imprisonment and loss of property. With them, some of the most able farmers were removed from production. The declining agricultural output led to a constant scarcity of food, especially meat. Rakosi rapidly expanded the education system in Hungary. This was an attempt to replace the educated class of the past by what Rakosi called a new working intelligentsia. In addition to effects such as better education for the poor, more opportunities for working-class children and increased literacy in general, this measure also included the dissemination of communist ideology in schools and universities. Also, as part of efforts at separation of church and state, practically all religious schools were taken into state ownership, and religious instruction was denounced as retrograde propaganda and gradually eliminated from schools. The Hungarian churches were systematically intimidated. Cardinal Joseph Mainz Zenti, who had bravely opposed the German Nazis and the Hungarian fascists during the Second World War, was arrested in December 1948 and accused of treason. After five weeks under arrest, he confessed to the charges against him and he was sentenced to life imprisonment. The Protestant churches were also purged and their leaders were replaced by those willing to remain loyal to Rakosi's government. The new Hungarian military hastily staged public, pre-arranged trials to purge Nazi remnants and imperialist saboteurs. Several officers were sentenced to death and executed in 1951, including Lajos Toth a distinguished fighter ace of the World War II Royal Hungarian Air Force, who had voluntarily returned from U.S. captivity to help revive Hungarian aviation. The victims were cleared posthumously following the overthrow of communism. Preparations for a show trial started in Budapest in 1953 to prove that Raoul Wallenberg had not been dragged off in 1945 to the Soviet Union but was the victim of cosmopolitan Zionists. For the purposes of this show trial, three Jewish leaders as well as two would-be eyewitnesses were arrested and interrogated by torture. The show trial was initiated in Moscow following Stalin's anti-Zionist campaign. After the death of Stalin and Lavrenta Beria, the preparations for the trial were stopped and the arrested persons were released. Rakosi's priorities for the economy were developing military industry and heavy industry and providing the Soviet Union with war compensation. Improving standards of living were not a priority, and for this reason the people of Hungary saw living standards fall. Although his government became increasingly unpopular, he had a firm grip on power until Stalin died on March 5, 1953 and confused power struggle began in Moscow. Some of the Soviet leaders perceived the unpopularity of the Hungarian regime and ordered Rakosi to give up his position as prime minister in favor of another former communist in exile in Moscow, Imre Nagy, who was Rakosi's chief opponent in the party. Rakosi, however, retained his position as General Secretary of the Hungarian Working People's Party and over the next three years the two men became involved in a bitter struggle for power. As Hungary's new Prime Minister, Imre Nagy slightly relaxed state control over the economy and the mass media and encouraged public discussion on political and economic reform. In order to improve general living standards, he increased the production and distribution of consumer goods and reduced the tax and quota burdens of the peasants. Nagy also closed forced labor camps, released most of the political prisoners the communists were allowed back into party ranks and reigned in the secret police, whose hated head, 
Gaber Peter, was convicted and imprisoned in 1954. All these rather moderate reforms earned him widespread popularity in the country, especially among the peasantry and the left-wing intellectuals. Following a turn in Moscow, where Malenkov, Nagy's primary patron, lost the power struggle against Khrushchev, Matthias Rakosi started a counterattack on Nagy. On March 9, 1955, the Central Committee of the Hungarian Working People's Party condemned Nagy for a rightist deviation. Hungarian newspapers joined the attacks, and Nagy was accused of being responsible for the country's economic problems. On April 18, he was dismissed from his post by a unanimous vote of the National Assembly. Soon after, Nagy was even excluded from the party and temporarily retired from politics. Rakosi once again became the unchallenged leader of Hungary. Rakosi's second reign, however, did not last long. His power was undermined by a speech made by Nikita Khrushchev in February 1956, in which he denounced the policies of Joseph Stalin and his followers in Eastern Europe, especially the attacks on Yugoslavia and the propagation of cults of personality. On July 18, 1956, visiting Soviet leaders removed Rakosi from all his positions and he boarded a plane bound for the Soviet Union, never to return to Hungary. But the Soviets made a major mistake by the appointment of his close friend and ally, Erndzer, as his successor, who was equally unpopular and shared responsibility for most of Rakosi's crimes. The fall of Rakosi was followed by a flurry of reform agitation both inside and outside the party. Laszlo Rajk and his fellow victims of the showcase trial of 1949 were cleared of all charges, and on October 6, 1956, the party authorized a reburial, which was attended by tens of thousands of people and became a silent demonstration against the crimes of the regime. On October 13, it was announced that Imran Nagy had been reinstated as a member of the party. On October 23, 1956, a peaceful student demonstration in Budapest produced a list of 16 demands of Hungarians' revolutionaries for reform and greater political freedom. As the students attempted to broadcast these demands, the State Protection Authority made some arrests and tried to disperse the crowd with tear gas. When the students attempted to free those arrested, the police opened fire on the crowd, setting off a chain of events which led to the Hungarian Revolution of 1956. That night, commissioned officers and soldiers joined the students on the streets of Budapest. Stalin's statue was brought down and the protesters chanted Russians go home, away with Jer and long live Nagy. The Central Committee of the Hungarian Working People's Party responded to these developments by requesting Soviet military intervention and deciding that Imran Nagy should become head of a new government. Soviet tanks entered Budapest at 2 a.m. on October 24. On October 25, Soviet tanks opened fire on protesters in Parliament Square. One journalist at the scene saw 12 dead bodies and estimated that 170 had been wounded. Shocked by these events, the Central Committee of the Hungarian Working People's Party forced Erndzer to resign from office and replaced him with Janos Kader. Imran Nagy now went on Radio Kossuth and announced he had taken over the leadership of the government as chairman of the Council of Ministers. He also promised the far-reaching democratization of Hungarian public life, the realization of a Hungarian road to socialism in accord with our own national characteristics, and the realization of our lofty national aim, the radical improvement of the workers' living conditions.
On October 28, Nagi and a group of his supporters, including Janosch Kader, Gazalo Sanchi, Antal Apro, Karoli Kiss, Frank Munich and Zoltan Sabo, managed to take control of the Hungarian Working People's Party. At the same time, revolutionary workers' councils and local national committees were formed all over Hungary. The change of leadership in the party was reflected in the articles of the government newspaper Sabad Nep. On October 29 the newspaper welcomed the new government and openly criticized Soviet attempts to influence the political situation in Hungary. This view was supported by Radio Mishkolts, which called for the immediate withdrawal of Soviet troops from the country. On October 30, Imran Nagy announced that he was freeing Cardinal Josef Mines Zenti and other political prisoners. He also informed the people that his government intends to abolish the one-party state. This was followed by statements of Zoltan Tildi, Anna Kethli, and Frank Farkas concerning the restitution of the Smallholders Party, the Social Democratic Party and the Petvi Party. Nagy's most controversial decision took place on November 1, when he announced that Hungary intended to withdraw from the Warsaw Pact as well as proclaiming Hungarian neutrality. He asked the United Nations to become involved in the country's dispute with the Soviet Union. On November 3, Nagy announced details of his coalition government. It included communists, three members of the Smallholders Party, three Social Democrats, and two Petfi peasants. Pal Malater was appointed Minister of Defense. Nikita Khrushchev the leader of the Soviet Union, became increasingly concerned about these developments and on November 4, 1956 sent the Red Army into Hungary. Soviet tanks immediately captured Hungary's airfields, highway junctions, and bridges. Fighting took place all over the country, but the Hungarian forces were quickly defeated. During the Hungarian uprising, an estimated 20,000 people were killed, nearly all during the Soviet intervention. Imre Nagy was arrested and replaced by the Soviet loyalist Janosch Kader. Nagy was imprisoned until his execution in 1958. Other government ministers or supporters who were either executed or died in captivity included Pal Malater, Gazalo Sanchi, Adela Shigathi and Miklos Jims. Once he was in power, Janosch Kader led an attack against revolutionaries. 21,600 Mavericks were imprisoned, 13,000 interned, and 400 killed. But in the early 1960s, Kader announced a new policy under the motto of He who is not against us is with us, a modification of Rakosi's statement. He who is not with us is against us. He declared a general amnesty, gradually curbed some of the excesses of the secret police, and introduced a relatively liberal cultural and economic course aimed at overcoming the post-1956 hostility towards him and his regime. In 1966, the Central Committee approved the new economic mechanism, through which it sought to rebuild the economy, increase productivity, make Hungary more competitive in world markets, and create prosperity to ensure political stability. Over the next two decades of relative domestic quiet, Kader's government responded alternately to pressures for minor political and economic reforms as well as to counter pressures from reform opponents. By the early 1980s, it had achieved some lasting economic reforms and limited political liberalization and pursued a foreign policy that encouraged more trade with the West. Nevertheless, the new economic mechanism led to mounting foreign debt that was incurred in order to shore up unprofitable industries. 
Hungary's transition to a Western-style democracy was one of the smoothest among the former Soviet bloc. By late 1988, activists within the party and bureaucracy and Budapest-based intellectuals were increasing pressure for change. Some of these became reform socialists, while others began movements which were to develop into parties. Young liberals formed the Federation of Young Democrats, a core from the so-called Democratic Opposition formed the Alliance of Free Democrats, and the National Opposition established the Hungarian Democratic Forum. Civic activism intensified to a level not seen since the 1956 revolution. In 1988, Kader was replaced as General Secretary of the Communist Party, and Reform Communist leader Imre Pazge was admitted to the Politburo. In 1989, the parliament adopted a democracy package that included trade union pluralism, freedom of association, assembly and the press, a new electoral law, and in October 1989 a radical revision of the constitution, among others. Since then, Hungary has reformed its economy and increased its connections with Western Europe. It became a member of the European Union in 2004. A Central Committee plenum in February 1989 endorsed in principle the multi-party political system and the characterization of the October 1956 revolution as a popular uprising, in the words of Pazge whose reform movement had been gathering strength as Communist Party membership declined dramatically. Kader's major political rivals then cooperated to move the country gradually to democracy. The Soviet Union reduced its involvement by signing an agreement in April 1989 to withdraw Soviet forces by June 1991. National unity culminated in June 1989 as the country reburied Imre Nagy, his associates, and, symbolically, all other victims of the 1956 revolution. A Hungarian national round table, comprising representatives of the new parties and some recreated old parties, the Communist Party, and different social groups met in the late summer of 1989 to discuss major changes to the Hungarian constitution in preparation for free elections and the transition to a fully free and democratic political system. In October 1989, the Communist Party convened its last Congress and re-established itself as the Hungarian Socialist Party. In a historic session on 1620 October 1989, the parliament adopted legislation providing for multi-party parliamentary elections and a direct presidential election. The legislation transformed Hungary from a people's republic into the Republic of Hungary, guaranteed human and civil rights, and created an institutional structure that ensures separation of powers among the judicial, executive and legislative branches of government. On the anniversary of the 1956 revolution, October 23, the Hungarian Republic was officially declared by the provisional president of the Republic Matthias Szrs as the replacement for the Hungarian People's Republic. The revised constitution also championed the values of bourgeois democracy and democratic socialism and gave equal status to public and private property. The first free parliamentary election, held in May 1990, was effectively a plebiscite on communism. The revitalized and reformed communists performed poorly despite having more than the usual advantages of an incumbent party. Populist, center-right, and liberal parties fared best with the Hungarian Democratic Forum winning 43% of the vote and the Alliance of Free Democrats capturing 24%. Under Prime Minister Joseph Antel, 
the MDF formed a centre-right coalition government with the Independent Smallholders Party and the Christian Democratic People's Party to command a 60% majority in the parliament. Parliamentary opposition parties included SZDSZ, the Hungarian Socialist Party, and the Alliance of Young Democrats. Between March 12, 1990 and June 19, 1991 the Soviet troops left Hungary. The total number of Soviet military and civilian personnel stationed in Hungary was around 100,000, having at their disposal approximately 27,000 military equipment. The withdrawal was performed with 35,000 railway cars. The last units commanded by General Viktor Sylov crossed the Hungarian-Ukrainian border at Zahony, CHOP. Peter Boros succeeded as Prime Minister after Antel died in December 1993. The antel boros coalition government struggled to create a reasonably well-functioning parliamentary democracy in a market economy and to manage the related political, social and economic crises resulting from the collapse of the former communist system. The massive decline in living standards led to a massive loss of political support. In the May 1994 election, the socialists won a plurality of votes and 54% of the seats after a campaign focused largely on economic issues and the substantial decline in living standards since 1990. This signaled a wish to turn back to the relative security and stability of the socialist era, but voters rejected both right and left wing extremist solutions no such party gained seats in parliament. After its disappointing result in the election, leadership of the Fides party opted for an ideological shift from a liberal to a conservative party. This caused a severe split in the membership and many members left for the other liberal party, the SZDSZ, which formed a coalition with the socialists, leading to a more than two-thirds majority. The coalition was influenced by the socialism of Prime Minister Jayola Horn, by the economic focus of its technocrats and ex cadre entrepreneur supporters, and by its liberal coalition partner the SZDSZ. Facing the threat of state bankruptcy, Horn initiated economic reforms and aggressive privatization of state enterprises to multinational companies in return for expectations of investment. The socialist liberal government adopted a fiscal austerity program, the Bakros package in 1995, which had dramatic consequences for social stability and quality of life. The government introduced post-secondary tuition fees, partially privatized state services, but supported science both directly and indirectly, through the private sector. The government pursued a foreign policy of integration with Euro-Atlantic institutions and reconciliation with neighboring countries. Critics argued that the policies of the ruling coalition were more right-wing than those of the previous right-wing government had been. The Bakros package and efforts at privatizations were unpopular with voters, as were rising crime rates, allegations of government corruption and an attempt to restart the unpopular program of building a dam on the Danube. This dissatisfaction among voters helped to propel centre-right parties into power following national elections in May 1998. Fides gained the plurality of parliamentary seats and forged a coalition with the smallholders and the Democratic Forum. The new government headed by 35-year-old young reformist Fides S. leader, the new Prime Minister Viktor Orban, promised to stimulate faster growth, curb inflation, and lower taxes. It inherited an economy with positive economic indicators, including a growing export surplus. The government abolished tuition fees and aimed to create good market conditions for small businesses and to encourage local production with domestic resources. In terms of foreign policy, 
the Orban administration continued to pursue Euro-Atlantic integration as its first priority, but was a more vocal advocate of minority rights for ethnic Hungarians abroad than the previous government had been. As a result of a 1997 referendum, Hungary joined NATO in 1999. In 2002, the European Union agreed to admit Hungary, along with nine other countries, as members on January 1, 2004. FIDES was criticized by its adversaries for the party's presentation of history, particularly the 1989 fall of communism. While FIDES had suggested that the Socialist Party is the moral and legal successor to the hated state party of the communist past, the socialists would assert that they had been those who had pushed for change from within, derided FIDES members for crediting themselves as the sole creators and heirs of the fall of communism. In the 2002 election the MSZP-SZDSZ left-wing coalition narrowly beat the FIDES-MDF right-wing coalition in a fierce political fight, with record-high 73% voter turnout. Peter Mejici became the new prime minister. Under the socialist liberal government, the economic balance of the Hungarian economy started a free fall, while quality of life, infrastructure, and technology improved. On April 12, 2003, Hungarians voted to join the European Union, with 83% of the votes in favour. Since the EU had already accepted Hungary as a possible member, the four leading political parties agreed to establish the required prerequisites and policies and to work together to prepare the country for the accession with the least possible harm to the economy and people while maximizing the positive effects on the country. On May 1, 2004 Hungary became a member of the EU. In the elections of April 2006, Hungary decided to re-elect its government for the first time since 1989, though with a new prime minister, Ferenc Gyurcsány. The left strengthened its position, with the coalition of the Social Democrats and the Liberals reaching 54% of the vote and winning 210 seats as opposed to the previous 198. The parties of the previous legislature again won parliamentary seats. The new parliament assembled in late May 2006, and the new government was formed in June 2006. The new government presented plans to reach balance and sustainable economic growth by removing subsidies to the growth of standard of living, which it had not mentioned during its electoral campaign. A leaked speech was followed by mass protests against the Gyurcsány government between September 17 and October 23, 2006. It was the first sustained protest in Hungary since 1989. From 2007, when increased inflation caused by tax increases reduced the standard of living, a complete restructuring of the state administration, energy sector, relations with private business, health sector, and social welfare took place. Members of affected professional unions describe the measures as lacking discussion and uncompromising. The country joined the Skengen area at the end of 2007. In 2008, the coalition broke up over the disagreement whether the insurance side of the health sector should be state-owned and its policies decided by the state or by private companies. This conflict was followed by a successful public referendum, initiated by FIDES, calling for the abolition of university tuition fees, direct payments by insured patients on receiving medical attention, and daily fees at hospital by insured patients. This effectively stopped the restructuring of health care, while it remained completely publicly owned. Because of this the Liberals left the coalition and from then on the Socialists governed as a minority.
the 2008 financial crisis caused further budgetary constraints. After Jai Yurksani's resignation, the Socialists put forward a government of experts under Gordon Bajanay in March 2009, which would only make essential macroeconomic decisions. In the first round of the 2010 spring general elections, the right-wing Fides received 2.704 million votes, i.e. the votes of 33.69% of the 8.026 million eligible voters or 52.73% of the 5.128 million actual voters for party lists, which resulted in more than two-thirds of the seats in Parliament. Fides took 263 seats, the Socialists 59, Radical, far-right nationalist Jabik 47, and the newly founded Lehet Masa Politika 16, with one seat taken by an independent. In the autumn municipal elections, Fides achieved a majority in almost all local and mayoral elections, winning the traditional strongholds of the liberal parties. Viktor Orban S. led Fides adapted the new constitution of Hungary. The main goal of the government was to restart economic growth. It introduced a flat tax system for income tax, 16% for everyone. Prime Minister Viktor Orban discarded the idea of welfare state, he stated the Hungarian economy must be a work-based economy. By 2014 significant improvements were made in decreasing unemployment to 7.1% in 2014 and generating economic growth. But the growth has been very unequal, the wealth of the top 20% of the society grew significantly, while the ratio of people living below poverty line increased from 33% in 2010 to 40% in 2014. The government centralized the education system, and started a multiple-year-long program for increasing the salaries of teachers and health professionals. In the parliamentary elections of spring 2014, Fides again won a supermajority, but only by a one MP margin. In February 2015, a by-election was held in the city of Vesprem where an opposition-nominated MP was elected, thus Fides lost its supermajority. In the autumn of 2014 the Fides government planned to tax the use of the Internet based on the traffic but had to withdraw the plan because of the demonstrations and outrage. The dropping popularity of Fides stopped in the summer of 2015 when the party started a vehement anti-immigrant campaign building a fence on the borders. In the first months of 2016 new demonstrations started against the government, this time by the teachers. In the 1920s historians with a sense of national mission urgently rewrote the history of Hungary to emphasize nationalism and deem phasize Austrian influences. By the 1930s, political history was in decline and an effort was made to introduce social history in the style of the French Annals School. After the war only Marxist interpretations were allowed. With the end of communism in Hungary in 1989, Marxist historiography collapsed and social history came into its own, especially the study of the demographic patterns of the early modern period. Research priorities have shifted toward urban history and the conditions of everyday life. Lists General